I, Andy S here from Blair Varick, currently next to Loch Katrin. Now, Loch Katrin is very special. I bet you guys don't know back in Glasgow that when you turn your taps on, the water that comes out of the tap comes from here. And we're going to go on a bit of a journey today. We're going to see how the water gets from here at Loch Katrin all the way to your taps back in the city of Glasgow. Loch Katrin. In the heart of the Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park, this loch is 13 kilometres long and one kilometre wide at its widest point. The loch and its surrounding areas are steeped in history and is recognised as the favoured and much loved setting of some of Sir Walter Scott's most famous poetic works, as well as boasting links to Scottish legend Rob Roy McGregor. Loch Catrin is situated in a typical U-shaped valley which has been eroded by glaciers. This results in a body of water that is very deep, 154 metres with narrow beaches and steep sides. The glacier that dug out Loch Catrin was extremely thick in some parts, covering the hills around the loch, especially on the south side of it where it merged with the ice from the Forth Valley all the way towards Loch Lomond. The loch is also home to many wildlife species. Among some of the things that you can see around the loch, you might get a glimpse of a golden eagle soaring above the hillside. But one of the most amazing things is the abundance of fish in the loch, one of which is called the Arctic char, which is the leftovers from the last ice age as they really like cold deep water. The loch itself is also steeped in its own unique engineering history and has been providing the city of Glasgow with fresh water since the start of its construction in 1855, where the Loch Catrin Water Project began. With this in mind, a civil engineer called John Frederick Bateman started work on the Loch Catrin Water Project to bring Glasgow clean water. Before the first phase of construction in 1859, the majority of Scotland's largest city took its drinking water from a small number of public wells supplied by the River Clyde. Waterborne diseases such as cholera were rife and the city's rapidly expanding population needed a clean and safe water supply. So the decision was made to bring drinking water from Loch Katrin, a huge project that involved the construction of a dam, 26 miles of aqueduct and miles and miles of distribution pipes under the ground. The first aqueduct includes tunnels through mountainous terrain in the shadow of Ben Lomond, Scotland's most southerly Munro, and bridges over the valleys called aqueducts. The area surrounding the loch was never used for farming which meant there was very little pollutants to go into the loch. Instead, there were lots of inlets and streams that came down from the mountains around, which kept a constant supply of pure, clean water. With Glasgow growing ever bigger, in 1885, a second act was passed to increase the level of Loch Catrin and build a second aqueduct and create a new reservoir at Craig Maddy, which is just to the north of Mulgai. To cope with the demand of the second aqueduct, they actually had to raise the level of Loch Catrin. And to do this, they used nearby Loch Arklet. And at the far eastern end, you can see where the water comes in and goes down a series of steps into Loch Catrin. Also on the other side of Loch Catrin is Glen Finglas, where they built a dam and used the water from there to also help raise the level of the loch. So in 1902, the Loch Arklet Bill was passed to build a dam and divert the water supply to Loch Catrin via a tunnel underneath the hillside. In 1909, the Loch Arklet Dam construction started, and in 1914, the Loch Arklet Dam and all the works were completed. In 1919, an act to further raise Loch Catrin was passed, so in 1929, the level of Loch Catrin was raised by increasing the height of nearby Loch Arkery and the dam wall around the inlet for the aqueducts. Nearby Glenfinglas in 1958, the tunnel to Loch Catrin was finally completed, and then in 1965, the Glenfinglas Dam project was finally completed. So there you have it folks, an absolutely fascinating insight of how the water gets from here at Loch Catrin all the way to your taps back in Glasgow what has to be an amazing piece of Victorian engineering which is still working today over 160 years after it was first built. If you've enjoyed this video remember to check out the Blevedek Bites feeds, check out all the socials and remember to keep your eyes open for more videos coming from the rest of the team in the very near future. Thanks for watching.